Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's tackle the x direction. We want to find the x coordinate of the center mass of the general spandrel. We found the y coordinate in the previous video, and because of lack of board space, we'll make it a separate video to find the x coordinate in the uh, in, or to find the x coordinate of the center mass. This is the general equation. Notice we drew a small little dA. Now in the horizontal direction, we need to find the coordinates of the center mass of this little strip and that would be equal to the average distance between the, here and here. So we take this distance, which is a, distance, which is x, x plus a divided by 2 would be the position of that center mass. So this is equal to the integral of a plus x divided by 2. We multiply the times dA. dA would be the length times the width. The width would be dy. The length would be a minus x. So that would be a minus x times dy, that is equivalent to my small little strip, the dA of that strip right there. And then we divide that by the integral of dA. Again, that would be a minus x times the width, which is dy. So a minus x times the width, which is dy. We're going to integrate this in the y direction, that would be from 0 to h, so the limits would be from 0 to h, 0 to h. We can factor 1 half out of the numerator and we can multiply these, that gives us the x-coordinate of the center mass is equal to 1 half times the integral from 0 to h of a squared minus x squared times dy, and divide the whole thing by the integral from 0 to h of a minus x times dy. Now we're looking at our original equation here to try and find some means of replacing x squared for some expression of y and x for some expression of y. Hmm, how do we do that? Let's take the nth root of both sides. Here we take this equation, we're going to write this as y divided by k is equal to x to the n power. If we now take the nth root of both sides, that would be the nth root of y divided by k is equal to x without an exponent. If we want x squared, we square both sides. That means that x squared can now be written as the nth root of y over k and the whole thing squared. Maybe a better way to write it would be to say x is equal to y to the 1 over n power divided by k to the 1 over n power, and x squared can be written as y over times to the 2 over n power divided by k to the 2 over n power. Maybe we'll go ahead and use these substitutions in our integral so that we can integrate in the y direction. Let's try it and see what we get. This is equal to 1 half times the integral of a squared minus x squared. And x squared can be written as this. a squared minus x squared, which is y to the 2 over n power divided by k to the 2 over n power times dy divided by the integral. And of the limits are from 0 to h. Can't forget the limits. And here we get a minus x, that would be a minus, instead of x, we write y to the 1 over n power divided by k to the 1 over n power times dy. Now we're ready to integrate those. Let's see what we get. The x coordinate is equal to 1 half times, oh, since we're integrating, we don't need integral sign anymore. That would be a, a squared times y minus y to the 2 over n plus 1 power divided by 2 over n plus 1 times 1 over k to the 2 over n power. And that would be evaluated from 0 to h divided by a times y minus y to the 1 over n power plus 1 divided by 1 over n power plus 1 times 1 over k to the 1 over n power. And that would also be evaluated from 0 to h. Can't forget that. 
plug in the lower limit, we get nothing, so only the upper limit is important. When we plug in the upper limit, we get the following. This is equal to 1 half times a square h minus, that would be h to the 2 over n plus 1 power divided by, now I'm going to find the common denominator here, that would be 2 plus n over n, 2 plus n over n in the denominator times 1 over k to the 2 divided by n power. In the denominator we get a times h minus h to the 1 over n plus 1 power divided by, oop, can't go away this way, so divided by, again find the common denominator would be 1 plus n over n so 1 plus n over n times 1 over k to the 1 over n power. This looks like a really messy problem, but I think we can see some things we can factor out. If we factor out an h in the numerator and an h in the denominator, then we end up with something we can simplify. Let me show you what I mean here. So this becomes equal to, x bar is equal to 1 half times h, and what we have left in the numerator would be a squared minus h to the 2 over n power divided by 2 plus n over n times 1 over, and let me put a line there so we don't get confused, times 1 over k to the 2 over n. Now notice, h to the 2 over n divided by k to the 2 over n, and I come over here. If we substitute a for x, a for x, and h for y, we could then say that a is equal to h to the 1 over, whoop, 1 over n divided by k to the 1 over n. And we can say that a squared is equal to h to the 2 over n divided by k to the 2 over n. And so that's what I'm trying to get to right here. Notice h to the 2 over n, k to the 2 over n. Hmm, I think we're on to something. And then in the denominator, we get, we factor out an h, so that's h times a minus h to the 1 over n divided by 1 plus n divided by n times k to the 1 over n. So notice the h's cancel out and h to the 2n, 2 over n divided by k to the 2 over n right here is uh, a squared so we can replace this by a squared and we can replace this by a this becomes 1 half times a squared minus a squared divided by 2 plus n over n. In the denominator we get a minus a divided by 1 plus n over n. I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can still see that. Now we can factor out an a squared in the numerator, we can factor out an a in the denominator, and we can simplify the um, we're going to write it like this. This is equal to 1 half times a squared times 1 minus, and we take the denominator, we flip it over, bring it to the denominator, that would be n over 2 plus n, and in the denominator we get a times 1 minus n over 1 plus n. And then again, we can get rid of this a and that a, now we just have to find the common denominators. I now need some more board space again, so let me clean this up a little bit. So we have what we have right here. Let me then write this over common denominator in the numerator. Let me draw an arrow. Let's come all the way over here. And we get 1 half a times 2 plus n minus n divided by 2 plus n and that's divided by 1 plus n minus n divided by 
1 plus n. This simplifies to equals to, come over here, 1 half a times n minus n, that's 0, that gives me 2 divided by 2 plus n, make it a little smaller, divided by n minus n is 0, 1 over 1 plus n, 1 plus n, or n plus 1, I can reverse that. This 2 cancels out, that 2 becomes 1, and finally this simplifies to a times n plus 1 divided by n plus 2. And that is indeed the x-coordinate of the center of mass of the general spandrel with the equation y equals kx to the n power. Wow, that's quite a mess. It's mostly algebra. Once we have the integral done, it's mostly a reduction of all that mess in algebra to finally come up to the final answer. And so now that we know this, we can apply it and you'll see some examples where we can simply take this as a result and show you how to find the center mass of some very odd shaped objects, including things that include uh, shapes like the general spandrel. That's how it's done.